<clears throat> so chapter 14 gets into um, home ownership and the tax implications of that. And that's one thing that we try to make sure um, people understand that, yes, you can deduct home mortgage interest. Um, there are limitations on that, and there are limitations on home equity loans, and there are limitations on second homes. And so we want to make sure that people understand um, how that works. Okay, got my messages turned off now. So property taxes um, also can be deducted. Again, that's only if you itemize. And now that the standard deduction is so much higher and they've taken away personal exemptions, very few people um, are itemizing anymore. In fact, at VITA last year, we did 700 tax returns, and I think we maybe had 15 that itemized. And so <clears throat> it's really changed home ownership. It's taken away the tax benefit of mortgage interest and property taxes. Um, but then there still is the sale of a home. And some people can... Do, uh, take advantage of tax planning and buy and sell homes and live in them and um, defer the gain. And so that is one way of making money, but you have to be very careful that you're living in the home the required amount of time and that you've stayed under the minimums, etc. And so there's a lot more to it than um, are there tax benefits of owning a home? Yes, there can be. Um, and so with everything else, as with everything else, we have to be careful what we tell our clients. Um, but we can help them plan. They're, they're definitely, it's not um, a hard thing to understand. There's just lots of variables that we need to know. So I'm looking at a problem at the back of the book, and I'm looking at a couple who are debating whether they should buy or rent. So if they rent the home, it's $2,250 a month. And um, if they buy a home, it's $475,000. And it's interesting because I'm actually uh, counseling one of my daughters right now on buying or renting. And we looked at the numbers, and it does make sense for her to buy. However, there's a lot of non-quantitative non -quantitative or qualitative factors that she has to consider um, you know, how long will you live there? What's the market like? What's the market going to be like in two years? What's the economy? Um, can I sell it? I'm going to have to maintain it. If the air conditioner breaks, we got to fix it. And so what we're doing right now is just looking at the numbers. Keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> they're going to have to borrow 700, I mean, sorry, they're going to borrow $400,000. They have 75000 that she inherited. And so they'll only have to borrow 400000 um, they can do discount points or they can do a fixed interest rate. Um, and so that's also something that we have to consider, points and interest rate. And typically, when clients come to us, they, they know what their payments are going to be, and so that's already been taken care of. Um, they expect to live in the home for no more than five years. And um, if they don't purchase the home, they can take that $75,000 and they can hang on to it. And so it asks us, first of all, what is the after-tax cost of renting? And so, I mean, that's always something to consider. So if we rent the home, we've got monthly rent, obviously. Um, and we've got uh, interest earned on the $75,000 that they would save if they don't put it down um, as a payment on the home. And so the monthly rent is $2,250. And um, it doesn't really matter how you do this. We could do it annually as well. It's $27,000 a year. And they know that they can earn 5% interest on this uh, savings. And again, that's that's an estimate that could change, but they think they could earn 5%. And so $37.50 is what they think they can earn. And um, they would also have to pay taxes on that interest, something people often forget. And so they'd have to pay $37.50. That's much they're earning. And they're in a, I think they said a 24% tax bracket, marginal tax bracket. Yep, and so their um, total after-tax cost of renting would be the interest earned minus the tax they pay on that um, minus their rent. So $24,150 is what it's going to cost them if they want to rent a home.
So it's not too bad. Um, taxes, I'll go ahead and make a note out here for you guys, times 24%. Okay, so now let's look at, um, before we look at buying the home, it asks us to um, break even point in years for paying the points to receive a reduced interest rate. And this is always fun, and the banks will do this for you, but it's all also very good to understand because one, for yourself, and two, your clients might be interested in understanding how this works. And so we've got a loan summary. Um, it's 400000 and we get 5.75% with no points, or we get a 4.5% with two points, which two points equals $8,000, just so you know. Um, so we have the initial cash outflow. So that would be, I'm going to go ahead and show this as a negative, 8,000. Not case, cash. There we go. Um, and then we have the tax benefit of deducting the points. Um, and you can do that if you itemize. It's really important, especially somebody this young and just buying their first home. I would be very cautious um, about telling them they can itemize and making sure that they understand the implications of that. And I'll go ahead and show these calculations out here so that you have them. And then this one, the tax benefit. So again, they get to deduct that. So there is a tax benefit. $1,920, and so the after-tax cost of the points, and you can just sum these if you did a negative there, is $6,080. And it's shocking how hard it is to explain to people that the cost is not $8,000. You save money on those points, again, if you itemize. Um, so the before-tax savings per year on the 4.5% versus the 5%, and I'm real hesitant on this one, be, or sorry, 5.75%, because the interest is gonna change every year, but, um, but we'll just go with what they're doing here. So they're doing the 400,000 um, times 5.75 minus 4.5. I would honestly, in real life, <laughs> I would do an amortization schedule, so I would have the exact amount, but just to, make a quick decision. Um, I think it's okay to do it this way. And then you've got the foregone tax benefit, okay? So you're paying less interest, yes, but you're also not getting the full um, tax write-off. And so the 5,000 times 24 percent, which is your marginal tax rate, so 1,200. And so the after-tax <clears throat> savings of the 4.5 percent, and I need to show this as a negative, that I can sum these and I'll try to be consistent. I know a lot of you probably use Excel and wait, know more about Excel than I do, but it's always, you need to be very, very fluent in Excel if at all possible. And so the break even, that's what we see when, when we have employers call us wanting to hire our accounting majors, that's usually one of the things they ask us. Are they fluent in Excel? Okay, so the break even, <clears throat> we would simply take, um, Our after-tax cost of points, I'm sorry that my messages keep popping up. I thought I turned that off, but nothing embarrassing's popped up yet, so that's good. <clears throat> and then we divide that by the after-tax, um, and we see that it is 1.6 years. And um, basically, that's going to be 19.2 months. And is it worth it? I mean, that's the break even. I would say yes. And so um, then we're going to come down to part C. And it's going to ask us the after tax cost of buying the home. And so, first of all, we have our marginal tax rate, which we already know is 24%. We have the mortgage principal, which is $400,000. We have the mortgage interest rate, and we decided not to buy the points in this one. 
Um, and then we have the first year interest payment. Oh, I really don't like the way they're doing this, but that's okay. <laughs> I think we need an amortization schedule, but I'm going to do it the way the book's doing it because in your homework, it'll be that way as well. And then we have the tax savings um, from interest payments. And so we save, as we know. Um, and as much as they're paying an in interest, they're probably going to itemize um, after tax. But again, I would just make sure they understand After tax cost of interest payments. Okay, 17480. And then we've got deductible property taxes, which they told us was 3600 And then we have a tax savings on the property taxes. Again, I know y'all are tired of me saying this, but if they itemize, maybe I'll put that question on the final exam. And then we have the after tax cost of property tax. which is our cost, what we pay, minus our tax savings, or 2736 So the after-tax cost of buying a home is $17,480 plus $2,736. And why didn't it like that? Oh, what did I do here? There we go, $20,216. So it's going to cost them $20,216 to buy a home. It's going to cost them $24,000 to rent a home. Down here, they are buying property that's an investment. Up here, they don't have the liability of the home. So again, you've got to look at the qualitative factors. Um, everything we're doing here is estimates. It can change. But I would say overall, they definitely um, would want to buy a home. And so then the next part of this, I'm going to have to hurry up here. The next part of this says, um, I'm going to go down to D. It says, uh, what if they sell their home for $525,000, and um, this is March 1st of 2019, and they use the sale proceeds to pay off the principal mortgage, pay $10,000 commission to their broker, and make a down payment on a new home. However, the new home only costs $300,000. And so it asks us about the tax implications of that. And very quickly, I want to see if I can show you the sales proceeds then would be 525 And then sales commission, we, get, we deduct that from the amount. That's 10000 So the amount realized, not recognized, those words are different, realized is 515 And then we have the basis in the home. And that's what they paid for it, plus any improvements that they've made. Um, and then we have... We're going to calculate the gain realized, again, not recognized, realized. And the gain would be your amount realized from the sale minus your basis. Keep hitting extra buttons today. So we've got a $40,000 gain. Um, and then we have to consider, do we have an exclusion? Exclusion for sale of home. Um, and they can exclude that entire amount, and here's why. Um, after two months, the, they moved after two months, but they moved for work reasons. And because they work, moved for work reasons, they can qualify for a max, maximum exclusion on their home of, and here's where you have to calculate, $500,000, that's the maximum, times Two divided by 24 because they were only in it two months and the answer to that I'll just go ahead and type it in up here is 41 667 so that's how much they can exclude and their gain was only 40 so they can exclude the whole amount so the gain recognized different word is zero okay and then finally um, it asks us in the last one uh, there's a loss and again, the loss is realized, but it doesn't affect their taxes. You cannot deduct a loss on the sale of a home on your taxes. <clears throat> so I won't work through that, but just give you that piece of information. So um, it's a really fun chapter. It's your last chapter. And um, I know that you have learned a lot this semester, and I appreciate your patience and your hard work. And I hope someday you get to apply this as you begin preparing taxes.